Hey guys, Brent Hill Bring on Tools, aka BYT. Thank you for joining me. And today we're gonna to be working on adding a brick paver accent strip to my front door walkway area. Now it is pretty boring at this point, which is why let's dress it up. Let's get started. This is what we're starting out with, and I am excited to dress this thing up. As you can see, I already made a stop at Home Depot, so let's talk about materials. High strength concrete, perma sand from Satcrete, sub base rock material. And of course your trusty shovel and the brick itself. And a few more tools that you'll need are a wheelbarrow, a hammer and rubber mallet, masonry chisel, a square and pencil, grinder with masonry blade, and some good old protection. As you can see, it's a bit overgrown on the side of the walkway itself, so I'm gonna be taking my trusty shovel and doing a bit of excavation. Now for this project, I am using my narrow six inch wide shovel, which works perfectly in this type of application. Feel free to smooth out the area and stomp it down after excavating just to make sure that the soil itself is fully compacted. Just remember you only have to excavate a couple inches greater than the brick itself that you're going to be placing in there. Once that is complete, go ahead and grab the bag of 5 8 minus rock subbase and start pouring it into the area which you're going to be placing the rock on. Now this allows you to have a proper subbase for the brick or pavers itself. Make sure you stamp it down properly to make sure that the base is fully compacted prior to actually placing the brick. And as a quick side note, I do like to place a brick right in front of me because you know what, you can't lose it that way. On to the concrete mix. Now there's plenty of ways to actually mix your concrete, but the way I prefer is to make sure and pour the water in first prior to pouring in the concrete. This makes it easier to mix in thoroughly and avoid lumps, and you know how I hate lumps. Now I know I poured in enough water for at least two bags, so I first mix in the first bag nice and evenly, and then pour the second one in. Now there's always a delicate balance when working with concrete, making sure it's not too thick and it's not too thin. It's just right, just look at that, yes, perfect. Just like porridge, right? Okay, now let's start cracking. Pour a couple of scoops of concrete into the area and start forming it correctly. You want to make a nice little mound and then scrape off both sides. And that allows you to press up right against the concrete patio as well as the other brick next to it. Next, take your trusty rubber hammer and beat it into submission, just making sure it's nice and level. Once it's level, I like to build up a nice little mound on the back side of it, just to make sure that it's not gonna go anywhere and it's fully adhered and placed in the right spot. And after that, go ahead and repeat the process about 80 times. Yes, I know, it's a little methodical, sorry. Just make sure occasionally you stand up and look and make sure that it is straight, because we don't want any crooked sidewalks. No, we don't. Now you will have to occasionally go ahead and mix up a few more batches of concrete. I was surprised with how many bags of concrete I actually used on this project. I purchased 10 bags of concrete and I needed every single one of them. As for the brick I'm using itself, it's a pretty standard 8 by 4 inch brick. I picked up 120 bricks which did include a waste factor because I knew for sure that most likely there would be a few broken bricks at some point. Now that I got the easy side done, it's time for the hard side. Go ahead and pour your 5 8 Crush Minus. I did purchase approximately three bags of this Crush Minus, which covered this 80 lineal feet. As before, make sure you compact your Crush Minus rock before you proceed to installing your pavers. Now this side is harder because of the fact that we have corners, so we have to do some cuts. So place your brick on a hard surface and take your square edge and mark a 45 degree angle at the corner. Then take your grinder with your masonry blade and grind in a groove into the brick. It doesn't have to be too far, but at least a quarter of an inch deep. Then take your masonry chisel and your hammer and place it in the groove that you just made until the brick breaks. Now it won't be a perfect crack, but it should suffice for what you need, and you can always take your chisel and chisel out these small areas that need repair, and you're good to go. This is a side note, you can use your skill saw to do the exact same thing. Just make sure either way you are using gloves, eye protection, and some type of respirator. Once you have both of your 45 degree angle bricks, it's time to install. Just make sure they fit, and if they do, go ahead and slop in some concrete. Go ahead and level out your concrete and place your bricks into location and hammer them in. Just as a side note, this 45 degree angle is not easy to do and if you don't have the patience for it, I would suggest just doing a standard 90 degree angle. Once you have your corner piece in, you are ready to install the rest of it, which luckily is much easier than the 45 degree angle. 
We're doing the same thing over and over again, obviously. Just again, make sure you are getting up every once in a while and viewing and making sure that everything is fully level. Oh, it's just so easy when it's a nice straight one, but then you come to the dreaded corner piece again. Yes, the corner piece. And as discussed before, you can always do a 90 degree angle, which is what I did here because in all reality, uh, my patience was dwindling at this point. So cut it, place it, and you're good to go. A lot easier that way, a lot faster versus the 45 degree angle. Now once your bricks are fully installed, you want to let it dry overnight to make sure that the concrete itself dries appropriately. And once it does, you are on to day number two. Now we need to fill these cracks, which is why we are going to be placing a piece of tape at the end of each brick. That way, all of the perma sand does not fall out when we start pouring it. Now this perma sand is specifically used for pavers because of the fact that it has a hardening agent and it allows you to pour into a small crevice and harden automatically once it gets wet. I pour a significant amount of the sand into the crevices and then I take a paintbrush and push the sand into the crevices. As you can see, the tape does a very good job of holding the sand in place. As the holes gradually fill up, go ahead and try and sweep up the remainder and push it to the side. You might find that the holes aren't fully filled, which is why you can go back over them and fill them more. Once fully filled, sweep off the remainder and move to the next. One important item when doing this step is make sure you pick a day in which you will not have to worry about any type of precipitation because if it does start raining, you are basically screwed because that hardening product in the solution starts hardening immediately. Once all of your crevices are fully filled, it's time to start watering. So let's get your hose and start wetting the entire area down. You don't need any Mondo water pressure at this point in time. All you really need is just make sure that it, everything is fully off of the concrete as well as the brick face and making sure that you soak all of the corners and crevices. Once you're finished watering, you may find a few holes that need to refill, which is no problem because of the fact that all you have to do is pour in a little bit more sand and wet it and you are done. Just let it dry and it will come out just like this. My oh my, that is one beautiful sexy beast. And there you have it, episode number 9 of BOAT done. Good to go. This project really did take a little bit longer than I expected it to, but in all reality, that little accent strip on both sides really added some character to a much needed, boring walkway. Thank you for your time. Please like this video. Please subscribe to this channel, and please let me know what you'd like me to do in the next video. I might do it. In any case, thank you for your time, and catch you next time. Who puts a water main right in front of the front door? Come on. Really?